Hey, what's up? This is Hunter Nelson with Tortoise and Hare Software, and today we're going to be walking through an example of doing an on-page optimization for a landing page on an MSP's website to help it get more organic search visibility, align with search demand, and help generate more leads for an MSP. So let's dive right into the video. <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna to be kind of doing a little bit of a live optimization exercise uh, on those uh, landing pages on the Mercer Bucks Technology website. This is an IT company based out of Philadelphia. Um, and just kind of want to show you their 12 month kind of traffic view. And you can pretty much see exactly when I started doing SEO work for them because their search impressions jumped up super high um, and they're gonna be getting more organic traffic here. Um, if I change this filter from the last 12 months view, um, we can kind of see to a compare the last three months to the previous period. You know, we can start to also see like what query impact they have as well. So we can see that like in the previous three months, they were having zero impressions for highly relevant MSP terms like managed IT services, Philadelphia, managed services, Philadelphia. Um, you know, uh, managed IT support Philadelphia, you know, a lot of good stuff that they want to be ranking for and is in their own backyard. Um, and just kind of also show you a little, um, you know, about like what's been done here. So this was a previous version of their page and I'm gonna swap it back to a last 12 months view. And we can see that they had a their core IT support page, um, which was this page, um, had basically no, like a very low impression volume and was not ranking for anything like super relevant. Um, one thing I did was put you know some site structure onto their landing pages, and changed it to this updated URL. And we can see that if we look at this page, um, pretty much the that last one stopped generating impressions and this new one started generating impressions. And we can see that it immediately started helping them rank for, you know, relevant queries that they are, that are important to their business as an MSP. Now, the ongoing benefit of this SEO work is gonna continue long into the future. Um, SEO usually doesn't result in immediate impact, but we can see that we're already on the right track. Um, and I've gone through and I've optimized all their service pages here, and I've optimized a good chunk of their uh, uh, industry pages, but um, one thing I haven't optimized yet is their professional services page. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today is doing a live on-page optimization for their professional services page. So. Let's get started. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of note here and show you that I've already taken this page and moved it into a directory under their with their under <coughs> with their other industry pages. Um, and so that part has already been taken care of. Um, now a good on-page optimization kind of starts with research. So what we're gonna do here is come over to our search console and look at this page and see what's going on there. And although this page hasn't been optimized yet, we're already, I've already moved it to a new subdirectory. And so we're gonna just check out what it's you know ranking for there. And we do see we have a couple queries, professional services and technology solutions technology solutions for professional services companies. Um, so that's a good, you know, just start slash hint. But we're also just gonna check and see what the previous version um, of this page may have been generating impressions for. And we see that this, this is the new URL and then this is the old URL. So we're gonna look at the old URL and we can see that there was really not a whole lot of stuff that it was showing up for. So no clues there. Um, and even on the just moving it to an updated subdirectory has already improved this page. Um, but now we want to take additional 
uh, optimization actions and that usually starts with research um, so I'm gonna come over here to SEM rush and we're going to look at some keywords and see if we can come up with some clues to what we want this um, page to rank for and try and align, align it with search or demand. So let's start by kind of looking at a few um, common keywords such as like IT support for professional services and see what sort of data we can get from SEM Rush there. Alright, so we do see that there's a low volume of IT support for professional services and a couple of like um, city related keywords there um, so we can kind of start with this as a baseline as using this as like a, a good keyword to optimize for let's also look at like IT services profession for professional services see if that has anything okay we can see that we've gotten a, a better hit here um, and I can see that we have a good solid easy keyword keyword difficulty of one doesn't get any easier than that and um, higher volume of IT solutions for, for professional services so right now that's kind of our winner and is conceptually matching on the term that we just looked for and also includes IT services for, for professionals and some things like that so we've got some good uh, we also see some queries here around IT consulting um, for professional services and things like that um, but let's also just kind of take a quick look at this one um, and then let's also just check check it like manage IT for professional services also super low Let's refresh metrics on this one real quick. All right, still easy difficulty, um, low volume. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a approach of aligning to the high difficulty or higher volume lower difficulty um, IT solutions that seemed like it was going to be our best bet um, and yeah okay so we're gonna come back here to our landing page and we'll start out with going into the WordPress backend here and updating the kind of title and meta. Um, so one thing you can note is that I've already added in a featured image here to make sure that the um, landing page has a featured image. And just copy URL to clipboard here real quick. And you can see that this will be the featured image that shows up on um, social media platforms or when this URL is is shared on a direct means um, so we've gotten that taken care of already um, when I look at this URL I've also um, put in some alt text on the URL so the image is associated with the relevant keywords um, IT services for the professional services industry which is great um, and then we're going to change this to IT solutions for professional services, Mercer Bucks technology. So that's good. Um, we can see that somebody's written a, a meta description already here, but it's way too long. Um, so we're going to shorten that real quick and say IT solutions for professional services firms in greater streamline operations and 
improve your technology. Boom. Okay, so we've written a, a quick meta, meta description there. Now that's in a more uh, manageable like length. Um, so we can see a, a, a nice green bar there. And we're using our kind of target keyword within the meta and in then within the title. So I'm gonna hit update here. And then I'm going to come back to the kind of main page and hit edit with Elementor. Elementor is just a popular page builder on WordPress, um, so nothing too crazy there. Um, and they have some of the you know similar issues on um, a lot of pages. And I've already kind of tweaked this a little bit already, but um, I'm going to make this um, consistent with some of the other. Um, pages that I've done and I'm going to put a separate h1 here at the top and h1 is a heading one and it's going to be tell search engines what the page is primarily about so it or let me change the style here just so this is more readable text color we'll make it white and say IT solutions for, for professional services firms in the greater Philadelphia metro. Now, one thing I want you to note here is that I've purposely made our H1 that's on page and the title that we just saw on the WordPress backend is slightly different. We want to make those like both use kind of the target keyword, but both make them uh, slightly different so the page does not appear over optimized to Google. Um, so that's something that I've done kind of here that might not jump out at you, but is was a purposeful choice that I've uh, made here. Um, and then I'm going to change this to make sure that it's an H1. Um, and then I'm going to come down here and make sure that this which we can see is an H1 is changed to a paragraph because uh, we only want, want one H1 on the page and we want it to pretty much be the primary text that they see as soon as they get to the, the landing page. This was also set as an H3 so we want to change this as a paragraph um, and this is what's known as semantic HTML. Um, you know, what you see on the page as text and what the semantic HTML is matters um, for SEO and is a good web design practice and is good for accessibility. Um, so there are multiple reasons to make sure you've got your semantic HTML um, ironed out. And you know, one thing I'm also gonna do while I'm doing this optimization is just kind of update their branding stuff. Um, one thing this client has, has done is they've made all of their industry pages have like almost a separate brand. Um, what we want to do is make sure that the, um, you know, their some of their like more key branding elements are consistent. So I'm going to change this here to their primary accent color. I'm going to change this here to their primary accent color, as well. So now we've got this in Mercer Beck technology, Mercer Bucks technology colors. And then last thing I'm going to do here is add in a um, global, which is our inverse uh, transparent call button, which again is the Mercer Bucks technology brand. But you really want like a phone number button above the fold, um, especially on mobile. When this collapses down to a mobile device resolution, um, you know, the phone number in the top of the heading is not going to be visible out the gate, but it will be above the fold within the device viewport. Um, so this is a great experience and will help your mobile conversion rates uh, increase significantly. So I do this on pretty much all my websites. Um, again, one thing we're going to do here is, so I'm take, taking a look at this text. 
Um, this is an H2, which is good. Um, this was an H1. Um, now we're at a different sex section of the page, but it is a subordinate section to the overall page uh, like title. So you can kind of think of like building a table of contents for your page in Google's eyes. Um, this is like your title. Your H1 is like your like what is this document about? And then you know down from there we also um, want to like start nesting at the appropriate levels. So H2, H3, H4, etc. So we've made sure that this is an H2. That's good. Um, I'm going to come over here and pull a quick set of CSS that I've already um, done on some other pages to again just make sure that they're um, branding is consistent. Um, Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to adjust this and delete that. Oop. Okay, so um, actually, I'm going to delete this. So, this is another kind of like small mistake here. This is probably going to be a little bit harder to see, but um, they have a span with a strong nested into it. Um, and I don't remember the exact like name of it, but basically a span should not have a strong encapsulated within it. A strong should have a span encapsulated with it, Enca encapsulated within it. So I'm going to move the strong outside of the span um, to again have proper semantic HTML, um, which Google likes and will help you rank better. Um, and bonus points here is that we've already got the keyword within this. Um, so we have IT solutions for, for professional services companies within this paragraph text. So this is great because I don't even have to optimize this paragraph per se. Um, but one thing I do see is when we're like reading the copy here is that the um, just looks a little funky with um, saying like Mercer Bucks provides reliable IT solutions for professional services companies in Philadelphia, New Jersey, and Delaware. Um, we're kind of, we want to like make sure that we're, this is just trying to do too much in one paragraph. Um, so we're going to cut this down to just um, greater Philadelphia. And then take another kind of look at the copy here. And then one thing I want to do is just like give this page a chance to rank for some stuff that's a little bit more specific than just um, professional services firms. That is a little broad, so I'm going to say Mercer Bucks serves or provides IT solutions for. professional services firms such as and then just so I don't have to um, think too hard I'm gonna come over here to this um, list five types of professional services firms. So we got accounting firms, law firms, yeah, let's do agencies.
risers, that's a good one. Let's actually move that one up to here. And we've already got some coverage of healthcare here. Um, just go with that that's a good good list here um, and just this gives a little bit of tag diversity um, and is also a little bit more structured with a bulleted list um, makes it easily scannable so if we have one of these types of companies that's viewing this page it makes it easier to say like oh this is relevant to me um, and what I mean by tag diversity is like we don't want just like heading paragraph heading paragraph heading paragraph throughout the whole page it's always good to add a little like structure and um, tag diversity and kind of in the back end here we can see that like a bulleted list in a semantic HTML sense is a, a what's known as an unordered list a UL and then we have list items which are LIs um, so we're just increasing our tag diversity on this page which is good um, then I'm gonna come over here to this SVG um, and I'm going to copy paste this and open up Visual Studio Code. And hit new, select a language, HTML, paste this in. Auto format it so it's just a little bit easier to read. Come back up here to the top. Ideally, this would be an image, but this you know client has already kind of gone the copy pasted SVG route, which is just and it's going to be hard for us to source um, the images. Um, and it's just one of those things. It's like do the best we can with what we got there. Um, so then I'm going to come in here and add a title to the image. How is this? And just type, put a title here of accountant making calculations in her professional services firm, and then copy paste that and bring that back over here, and boom. Just give a little bit more um, juicy keyword stuff within our imagery. And then I'm going to come down here and see that we have an H2 as this, um, you know, kind of like a setup block here. But really, this is not an H2 because there's no real content underneath this. So, what we want to do is just change this to a P, which is a paragraph. Um, and then we also want to kind of fix our kind of branding stuff here again. So I'm going to come back here and snag this CSS so we can update this text. Um, and boom, do that. And then make sure we got our tags wrapped correctly. And then we'll come here and change this background to the primary accent color. And then we're good there. And then we're going to come here. So we've got an H2 already, which is good. We still need to update the branding once again. Oop. Go ahead and fix our semantic tags. good there and then I'm going to just quickly come here um, one thing I'm checking and but that this is already kind of ironed out is these are h3s nested within an h2 so this is the h2 right here 
Um, these are the H3s that are basically like subsections within this. So this is good semantic HTML structure. So don't have to fix that here, but it's you know something good to just note that I've already like checked to make sure it's looking good. Um, and then I'm gonna just adjust this to be more in line with the client's branding. All right, a couple other things is like these are linking towards. Um, you can see that these like sections have links um, within them um, via the underlined. And if I look at the kind of the content here, I can see that they have links. Um, but a lot of these pages are linking to the old URLs for these. So what I'm going to do just to make sure that um, this can actually affect crawl budget um, if you are like linking to a page that then redirects to another page it's not going to be a concern on a website this small um, but it's also just kind of a good practice to be linking to the correct destination um, so we've got our managed services page here so I'm going to come get the URL for the managed services page snag that and update the URL here and I'm also going to change this to managed IT support because managed services is kind of broad and could encompass managed IT companies but other managed IT stuff so I'm just being a little bit more specific managed IT support is also a good like just general MSP keyword so I know that's going to be a better fit for this page um, on our kind of a similar vein um, I'm going to change this to Microsoft 365 support. And this is just linking to the home page. Um, and I'm, but I also know that this client has a Microsoft 365 page. So I'm going to pull that from their sitemap here and update the link here so that is a better kind of structure and links to a more um, relevant page because we don't want to be talking about Microsoft services then linking them, them to the home page. That's a bad user experience and can, um, you know, uh, call, like, that's something that could cause a user to uh, abandon a browsing session. So we want to keep them on the site as long as possible. So this is just one of those super tiny things, but we're sending them to a more relevant page, which helps them you know, maintain continuity of their browsing session and is good for SEO, user experience, conversion rates, and, you know, lots of things. Um, and then we got our data backup and recovery. Um, so I'm going to snag that URL and update that URL. Pop that over here. I'm also going to change this to data backup and recovery. Or actually, I'm going to change it to managed data backups. I see this uh, keyword more frequently. Data or just backup and recovery is just, again, just too general. Um, and I like the managed data backups. Um, I think it's more clear for the user. Um, this is just kind of an experience thing. Um, now I'm also going to change this to managed cybersecurity. Um, the client here had kind of a network security oriented page, but I'm rebranding or retargeting it to cybersecurity because um, there's just more demand for that those sorts of keywords than there is network security. And I'm going to go grab their cybersecurity page and boom. Um, and then we're also going to change this to managed cloud solutions. Pull the cloud page. Update the link. And I'm going to change this 
to IT consulting. Again, consulting is just one of those things that's a little too vague. So we want to like make it a little bit more specific and tie it to potential keywords. Um, and then we'll grab the URL there. And update the IT consulting to that link. Um, and then I'm just going to reorganize these just a touch into priority that I think that the um, browser might appreciate. Um, so I think this is like a good priority. I might even, you know, honestly, I might even put IT consulting at the top, but um, I think this is a good order. Um, so yeah, and then let's just kind of take a look at the copy real quick. Um, Okay, so we see something about professional services firms here. Um, so the perfect partner for professional services firms. I'm going to change this to the perfect IT solution provider. And that's just going to be a kind of key, keyword variant that's very similar to the keyword that we're trying to rank for and should be a good like way to signal to Google that we want to rank for those types of queries. Um, so that's good. Um, and we're gonna circle back to this section in a minute, but just keep things moving here and kind of take care of some of these like quick and, quick and dirty changes. Um, so again, we talked about how this um, is such a small section, there's no content within it. This was also an H2. I just changed this to a paragraph tag. And then I'm going to come over here and again, update and make sure that their branding is um, on point. See another little chance to change the text. color here verify that that was an h2 change the button color let's also give a little bit of a information to Google within this SVG so copy the SVG code over here, paste this, auto format it, come back up to the top, and we will put in a title element. Um, and let's go IT solution writer for working with a professional service firm. And then come back in here and paste that. And that still looks good. I'm going to come back down here to this text. See what we're working with content wise. Okay, that's just a paragraph. That's good. This has been put as an H2. We need to again change this to a paragraph tag because that's going to be more semantically correct. Then we'll snag this and that and then we see I verify that this is an h2 
Um, now I'm going to check and make sure that these are nested appropriately, which they are not. So we've got to update these to H3s because um, this is like a subsection. Um, and I'm just going to quickly hit the update button here so I can save my work. I see the Elementor is starting to slow down as I've been working on this page. So that means the list of changes that have happened on the page is starting to get a lot for it to keep track of and I don't want to lose my work so I'm gonna save there and then I'm gonna control F5 hard refresh just so I can kind of refresh the, the builder here and make it not be too temperamental um, close out a window here all right and back to changing this to the appropriate headings so I'm gonna change that to an H3 I'm going to change that to an H3. I'm going to also change that to an H3. that to an H3 and then I'm gonna update the colors here make sure we're on brand it's totally fine for these images to be like kind of a separate color because the images are a separate thing but we want to make sure the core elements, text elements and things like that maintain kind of like the brand integrity. Okay. Um, come over here, put a title on these SVGs. see just doing a search here that there is no title on the SVG um, just to confirm that so title um, what were we doing here this is looks like a lawyer lawyer happy about their new IT solution provider This is a marketing agency. Ugh, those guys. All right, going to add in a title here. Agency employees collaborating on IT IT marketing strategy. How about that? Gives us both some IT and some marketing and all that stuff. Okay. All right, we're good there. Um, coming down to this section, we can see that this is an H2. Again, just want to change this to a H3 since that would be more semantically correct. And change our button color. And then we have a spacer here that I'm just going to delete. And this is the footer stuff. 
which has already been taken care of. Okay, so this is a good start to the page, but we have a couple other things we want to do. Um, there's good internal linking on this page via these little blocks, but we want to also put some external links um, and see if we can tie that to um, some relevant pages, this page to some relevant pages. Um, so let's look for IT solutions for professional services. Let's see if there's anything interesting that we can see on the SERPs. See a bunch of commercial pages, but sometimes there's like a good solid blog or guide. Okay, I like this. What is this? We got 10 best professional services, IT professional services you need for your business. And we got a nice little blog here, highly relevant to what we're talking about. Um, so let's see if we can work this one in somewhere. Um, I like that we're talking about a full range of services. Actually, this is a little bit more of a... I like this. This can in, in, invoke a little curiosity. The critical role technology plays, and we can do our link there. We actually do want people to click on links on pages, um, although that's a chance for them to bounce off your website. What you'll lose in potential people bouncing off and getting distracted, you'll make up for in volume from additional traffic to your landing pages. Um, so that is good. Um, let's see, actually, um, Okay, that's good. And then let's see if we can maybe work in a link in here. Yeah. Okay, so I like we got twenty four seven monitoring. relevant blog post here about why they need monitor security systems so let's go ahead and put a link to that here about 24 7 monitoring because they don't this is just one of those things that like what does 24 7 monitoring even mean we can put a little supporting link to help them understand what that is This page is a little, little. Actually, I like that this graphic here. That's probably why this page is ranking well. I got a good graphic. So let's also. Put a link to that 
here. Something going on in our tag here. A oh, put my slash in the wrong place. Okay, good there. So we got a couple good links here. Um, Uncompromised security. I'm going to just pop in the word cyber here just to kind of give that a little more keyword juice. Um, I'm going to change this from Microsoft Office Suite support to Microsoft 365 support. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can get maybe like one more link in here. Microsoft link to enhance team communication. Make sure we're opening link in a new tab for links that go to a separate domain and don't open in a new tab if it's something good that goes to your domain. Um, and then I'm going to try and work in a link to the about page here. Something I've been doing on some of the other pages, just good linking structure. Um, what we do. Okay. All right. Um, got some good links in there. Just going to kind of give this a good once over. Um, All right, so we've done like an initial cut here. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to SEM Rush, and we're going to look at this in the on-page optimization tool. All right, so we've done like a you know, our on-page optimization exercise kind of from a more technical perspective, but we're also going to do a, uh, just kind of take a quick look at like what we could do to optimize this page from a more uh, competitive research standpoint. 
Um, and to do that, I've um, come over here to the SEM Rush on page SEO checker, and I've hooked this page up to that checker and then put a focus keyword, um, IT solutions for a professional services firm, as the target keyword. And this tool basically runs a competitive analysis to see what the opportunities are to help it rank higher. Um, so, you know, we can see that there we got good SERP feature chance, strategy needs no improvement. Um, and then we are getting a couple of warnings here. Um, so this is asking us to use IT solutions for professional services firms in the title tag. Um, so let me just come back here and make sure that I've got... Okay, so this is close enough. So this is just kind of a false positive here on this warning. Um, and But, you know, it says, focus on creating more informative content. Your rivals that rank higher than you in Google for the top 10 are using long form content of some, on some of their web pages. So if I come here and look at this, um, you know, we can kind of see some metrics here that um, might be um, relevant. And see that we've got a decent keyword density. So I don't think this is too big of a thing. Um, and we're pretty competitive for like the rivals that are like the words that we're using compared compared to our rivals. Um, so we're like in line there. Um, backlinks, that's something that's just like not really relevant to on-page optimization. That's more of an off-page optimization activity. Um, content length, we're at 763 words. Our rivals average is at 984 words. Um, so, you know, I kind of looked at some of these, like we got some pages like this, and this is really more of a blog content and SEO fodder type of landing page. So I don't super view this as like a competitive landing page against us. This is just a page that stands out as designed for to be SEO fodder. Um, so I'm not super worried about that. And then some of our other kind of like higher content rivals are, um, you know, like a business directory sort of thing. Um, so, but if we look at like some of our more direct competitors, they're using half of um, the content. They've got 500 and whatever words. Um, this is the number one ranker for the key term. Um, and this one was blocked by the crawler for SEM Rush was blocked, um, so they didn't actually have information on this one. But this is a pretty decent landing page, but we are competitive with this landing page, um, and it looks roughly to be the same content length. Um, and the rest of these are kind of more aggregators and things that aren't necessarily like relevant. This is, a, again, another page designed specifically for SEO. Not super worried about that. So we are competitive here, um, which is good. Um, nobody's using video. I think that means this is an opportunity to stand out on this page. But given the low query volume and things like that, it's not necessarily like always worth it to get super nitty gritty with your optimizations. And we don't even um, know really what this page is going to rank for yet outside of the kind of handful of target keywords that we looked at. At this stage, we're really prospecting with this page. We want to just do our SEO best practices and give this chance, this page a chance to kind of like let the dust settle. And we're also targeting a local geography. A lot of this keyword data is for national keyword volumes. So we want to give this page a chance to age for about six months before we look at it again. Um, and odds are we'll wait longer than that. But so, you know, some of this stuff is so nitty gritty that it's not even, you know, worth it. And we don't even have a clear enough direction to like really like look at um, the sort of optimization you might want to do for a very high volume, very high comp competition keyword. Um, so that's what this, you know, tool can be kind of beneficial for. So I just wanted to kind of give you kind of a, a quick overview of it.
Um, there's also a readability score, um, and we are definitely in the top half there. Um, and just wanted to kind of point out the, the winner in the readability score. Um, usually when the, a page has a high readability score, it's a very competitive landing page. And this is something that's not necessarily like talked about a ton, but having real digestible content, simple sentences, very scannable, bulleted lists, things like that. You know, we, we are competitive right now with this page, but this is also just a really good landing page. Um, got some good custom graphics and things like that. Um, so just kind of wanted to point that out. Um, but these guys aren't targeting Philadelphia, so they aren't going to be necessarily a direct competitor. Um, and yeah, so anyways, just going to kind of come back. That was a, um, you know, some of looking at the more detailed analysis on creating more informative content. I am probably going to make a couple more copy tweaks after the video, but I don't want to get nitty gritty with the copy on this video because it's just not entertaining, you know, video content. But did want to kind of just show you what this looks like in this SEM Rush tool as something that you know might be more worthwhile on a higher importance, higher volume keyword page. Um, then, other than that. So there's some other suggestions here, and these are some of the things I'm, you know, going to do after the video offline. Is just um, add in some of these extra keywords to help us, like, you know, it, this can really help you, like, see are you like missing out on a section that like your rivals are really talking about, and Google really likes it. Um, so I like, you know, obviously people care about legacy systems and getting those upgraded. Those um, want to get some more data. Uh, analytics and visibility into the performance of their business most likely um, we can see that we're probably not talking about consulting or staying focused on consulting enough um, but that is something that we can also just quickly incorporate some additional bullet points or um, you know chats about there um, machine learning is kind of an interesting one um, but you know this is just like a good like semantic like these are things that like other people are mentioning on those pages that are in the top 10 and they're good clues on like you know what other content should we incre include on this landing page if you're kind of lost for ideas on how you can make a landing page better this is a great way to get that sort of visibility and information and then again link building is really more of an off page exercise um, but these are just like suggested like link building opportunities um, link building is a whole separate beast than on page optimization um, and we won't talk about that there. But anyways, just wanted to kind of give you a brief overview and show what some of the like additional like next steps and other um, cool things you can do to like, you know, continue to improve a page once you already have like done like a baseline on page optimization for it. And you're thinking about, OK, like how can I make this page even better? The on page SEO checker tool through SEMrush is a great way to do that and can give you some, you know, ideas for low-hanging fruit all right so I went through and applied some of the changes within that on-page SEO checker uh, that we just looked at within SEM rush and this page is good to go um, and our last step here is just to take this page and submit it to Google for indexing so I'm just gonna come over here real quickly into Google and use the inspect URL feature within Google. Um, we can already see that it is indexed, but since we have made significant changes to this page, I'm just going to hit the request indexing button. Um, this will put it in Google's uh, crawl queue and can accelerate the process of Google realizing that this page has changed and start the process of understanding how to re-rank, re-index, and get this page uh, showing on the search engine results page for the queries that we wanted to. So key, key step um, for generating results and uh, moving the timeline up um, when doing on-page optimization. So just wanted to point that out. Woo, that was a lot. Uh, had a nice little sprint there, but we accomplished a lot. We got a uh, on-page optimization taken care of for one of our clients here and hopefully taught you a few tips and tricks about how to conduct on-page optimization for your own MSP so you can 
help align the landing pages on your MSP's website with existing searcher demand and make sure that you're getting the most out of your website's content and landing pages. Um, so if you did like the video, please like and subscribe. We're going to be producing you know, ongoing content that helps uh, MSPs conduct SEO for their business, market their business, generate leads online, and a lot of good stuff that can benefit you all for free. Um, so again, hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. I'm Hunter Nelson with Tortoise and Hare Software, and until next time.